Hello, I'm X-Ray Bob, and today we're going to touch on some fluoroscopy math calculations like minification gain, flux gain, and brightness gain. So here is our image intensifier, courtesy of Quinn Carroll, one of the textbooks I use. You see that you have your incident ray diverging, so let's start with the tube. The X-rays come out of the tube, they go through the patient, and they are diverging, so they are magnifying the anatomy of interest. And here, the first thing they hit is this input phosphor. And the minification gain will be based on the diameter of the input phosphor uh, divided by the denomination of the output phosphor. So a lot of image intensifiers have 9-inch or 12-inch Im image phosphors, and then they minify the image because they've got to focus it onto a smaller area. So that is why we call it minification, and there's a brightness gain because you are taking a large image and making it small, and that's concentrating the signal. So you'll have perhaps a 4-inch real anatomy of someone's spine, or 3 inches. It'll be magnified up to maybe 9 inches by the time it hits your eye. And then you are going to focus it down to your output screen, at which point it may be just 1 inch in diameter. Often the output screens are one inch in diameter. So here is that initial image that's being uh, uh, imaged onto the input phosphor, and here is that output image. Let's see if I've got my sizes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it becomes one ninth the height and one ninth the width. And that is why we square the diameters, because we're talking about two dimensions. Um, so the minification gain is the ratio of the diameter of the input phosphor squared divided by the diameter of the output phosphor squared. And these are ratios. So on my test, please do not give me units. The correct unit is no unit. An example would be you have a input phosphor of 9 inch diameter and an output phosphor of 1 inch. Calculate the gain. So the input phosphor, you'd take 9 inch by 9 inch to get 81 inches squared. The output phosphor, you would multiply by itself to get 1 inch squared. And for the minification gain, you would put the input over the output, the big number over the small number. And you would end up with 81 inches squared over 1 inches squared, resulting in a minification gain of 81. And they're unitless. All right, our next term is the flux gain. So the minification gain dealt with the geometry of the image intensifier. How big is the first thing it, it hits, and how big is the last thing it hits? The flux gain is looking at the ratio of the number of the light photons coming out of the II relative to the number of x-rays that struck the input phosphor. So now we're doing what light comes out divided by what x-rays went in. Again, it's a ratio, so it'll be unitless and brightness flux gains are typically in the range of three to four thousand. Let's talk about our system. We have one x-ray coming in, zippa zippa zippa. It hits the input phosphor and it turns into a bunch of light photons because that input phosphor is our friend cesium iodide and it likes to uh, absorb the x-ray and kick out light. That light then hits our photocathode which it turns it into electrons. And you don't get one electron for every one light photon. It takes uh, quite a few light photons to generate each electron. Those electrons fly along and they get focused by our electrostatic lenses and they get minified. They get focused down onto a smaller output phosphor. And that output phosphor, though, like the input phosphor, says, hey, electrons, that's great. I can make a bunch of light out of this form of energy. And it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. You don't get one light photon for every electron. You get lots of electrons for each, uh, well, you get a lot of photons for each electron. When it's packaged up, of course, it looks like our big jug of water. And here's our output phosphor, typically around an inch. And here's our input phosphor that you'll find maybe nine inch, 10 inch, 12 inches. So that flux gain is light out over x-rays in. So here's an example. What's the flux gain for an II that emits 700,000 light photons when struck with 200 X-ray photons? Well, our first step is remember our formula. Next, we see there's 700,000 
photons emitted, and there is 200 x-rays striking the input phosphor. So what goes out over what goes in, the big number over the small number. This is also going to be a, a number larger than 1. So flux gain is 700,000 over 200, or 3,500. But wait, but wait, there's more. Okay, so what we do is we have an overall brightness gain, which is the product of the minification gain times the flux gain. What did I gain due to minifying my image and having those geometries? What do I get by picking these cool phosphors and this great photocathode so I can crank up my signal? So the brightness gain is the product of the two. So here's our last example. If an II has a minification gain of 81 and a flux gain of 3,500, what is the brightness gain? We would take our brightness, our formula, and we would say 81 is minification, 3,500 is flux gain. We drop them in place and multiply them for an ugly number, 283,500. So those are the three math problems and the three uh, terms you have to know regarding image intensifiers and image intensifiers are used in all our fluoroscopy systems. And don't forget, C-arm is fluoro. And I could be a lot worse than example three, though. Example three still gave you the minification gain. You could get a, a question that says, uh, an image intensifier tube has an output phosphor of this diameter, an input phosphor of that diameter. And when so many x-ray photons strike it, so many light photons come out. What is the brightness gain? And there you'd have to do example one and example two and combo them together in example three to give me one answer. Okay, so the good news is it's unitless. So just remember not to include units with your math answers and you'll uh, score your unit points. All right, bye gang. Bob out.